Hey, what's happening everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Behind the Sound. A show where we get to meet the music creators of Epidemic. My name is Arno Lur, probably more commonly known as that Icelandic guy. I'm from Iceland and I create content around photography, filmmaking, some vlogs, you know, the content creator lifestyle. And today, as you can see, we are located here in Stockholm, Sweden. Today's cards are going to tell me the name of the artist as well as the location, so yeah, let's check it out. Ebbo Krudum, a competitive pool player who loves nature and fresh vegetables. Alright, I like that, I like that too. Yet has a tendency of writing revolutionary music. Interesting, let's hear the guy you know. <laughs> I feel like I want to move my body when I hear this, you know, it's like Alright, I'm down to meeting him. It's impossible not to move your body when you hear this. So yeah, let's see where we're gonna meet them. Nacka, Stockholm. Alright, let's go. Hey man, how are you? I'm good. You're 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 good. Ulver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good, good, <laughs> good job, man. But Do you want to try my last name? Yeah, it's Krum. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think from like English perspective, it will be Kardam. Kardam. And, and that's the right one. Yeah. But uh, people in Sweden, like the Sweden, uh, Swedish speaking, they will say Kurdum. Kurdum. Kurdum, yeah. Which is, I'm totally fine with that, it's right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Okay, so let's start with the First question, just tell us a little bit briefly about yourself, who you are, how, like where you came from and, and uh, yeah. I was born and uh, raised in mm -hmm. the region of Darfur mm -hmm. and that's in western part of Sudan, in a small village, uh, only me and my grandma and we had like a big farm. I would take care of a lot of animals in the farm, you know, and helping my grandma always you know, uh, growing things and, you know, harvesting, you know, from season to season. It was like, uh, you know, a countryside, like a really, really countryside. <laughs> like a deep, deep, deep Yeah, yeah that's like right. really. We're talking countryside with no motors. It's like when you don't have any vehicle, any car, any Everything is with hand. Nothing is moving, you yeah. know, no, nothing is, <laughs> there's no sounds. <laughs> Only animals and, Sounds you know, peaceful, And though. birds, very peaceful. Sounds peaceful. Very peaceful, yeah. And um, yeah, and uh, but then I reunited with my um, uh, siblings and my um, parents when I was like 13 years. Into and, and then I moved to like a little bit bigger town. Mm -hmm. And I remember how uh, scared I was mm -hmm. because of the buildings we have. Because in that small village, everything is like only the trees are higher than mm -hmm. than anything else. But the houses are not that high, you know. So. How did you get into music? Yeah, I discovered that since I was five years old. As I told you, like in that small village, uh, taking care of the, you know, animals, mm -hmm. I would get bored, <laughs> you know. And uh, I would start like, uh, so I started to to build instruments. Yeah. So I found out I could build like this, uh, this small traditional flute. For real? Yeah. You're making your own there? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy, very easy, just like, you pick stick and then you make a holes and then that's awesome. Yeah, it may you may break it, but then you'll have to make you know, a just one. take another one. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks like yeah. all over the place, so it's like the materials are already there. After that, I I started to entertain the people in the in the village, you know, and um, they would just call me when they see me passing in you know on the street. Uh, I would. Like Apple, give like give a the tune here. Exactly. Yeah. I would I would sing like a couple of songs. I'm dancing at the same time, you know, yeah. like a, like a star, you know? <laughs> <laughs> without lyrics, of course. And then I would get paid 
What kind of music would you say you do, you know? Different genres actually, yeah? but yeah, but today officially, um, as I'm focusing on my writing, mm -hmm. um, was the artist name I've created today, mm -hmm. I would call my music um, like roots music, mm -hmm. have different branches awesome. from the African blues, the Afrobeat, and the Afropop, mm -hmm. you know. Is there an essential moment in your life that you, you have that was like, okay, I want to become a musician because of this or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, I would say that, um, especially under my period of development, uh -huh. when I found out like I could, how much I could do with music. Uh -huh. And the situation in the country like um, became a little bit tricky situation mm -hmm. during the war. So the war breaks out in Darfur and uh, I found like a good reason to become like a full-time musician. Mm -hmm. It was because of uh, creating awareness about the situation in Darfur, about the war itself and having people to support the revolution against the dictatorship. So the revol revolution and the resistance, they needed the words to be put out. You they know? do it through music. Yeah, they were like recruiting Powerful. as many young generation as possible. Because the revolution and the resistance, they didn't have any control over the media in the country. Mm -hmm. That was controlled by the government, by the dictatorship in the country, and that makes it's very difficult for the rest of the population to understand exactly what was going on. So that's where we came in, using the music, writing songs about the, the injustice, writing songs about the conflict. Is that and dangerous? Well, it was a risky. Yeah. It, was, yeah, it was like a life or death situation. But I was totally aware about it, mm -hmm. and I chose to do it. How do you put anyway. your music out in that situation? How do you get it to... Do you use internet, Spotify, or no? You would on take, the street. Uh, yeah, take instruments in the street, and then you would play, and you would have wow. audience, and That's you would great. grab the chance to pass through the political agenda about the revolution and the resistance. But the songs that what makes people come, or like at least stop and wanted to listen wow. to the music, and like yeah, that's the tricky part where we use that platform mm -hmm. and like work and do our uh, advocacy you know and again it's it was like really risky yeah, i can imagine it, it is risky because yeah the the security and intelligence they would just grab you from the street throw you into a jail somewhere you know torture you um, and if you're lucky you can get out having some injuries mm -hmm. and not dead so that happened to me and many others like many times but when you're convinced about an idea, when you believe about an idea, and I knew I had something to do, I had something to help with, which is the music. So I did not carry weapons and go to the front lines, but at the same time, I write songs. Are there any special people in your life that have like, supported you and shaped the way you, you know? work today and create music? Yeah, I think my grandmother is one of them because she appreciates when I'm creative, you know? Yeah, and I would say some of my peers, actually, yeah. yeah. Like who? Um, all of them are back home now. Mm -hmm. Like three of them, they're really... Um, until today, actually, they are very supportive. And, and But at the same time, I had many people criticizing you know, my music and, and the way I'm doing music, you know. Uh, people are calling me like I'm a radical artist. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think it's, it's because most of my songs discussing the issues of the injustice, you know, the justice and, uh, you know, the fighting corruption, mm. you know, and fighting dictatorship. How does that feel and, when uh, they, they tell you, you know, that your, 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 your music is no good or stuff like that? I, th I think they're just helping me to write more songs. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because as an artist, I believe in, you know, getting my inspiration from whatever is around, mm -hmm. you know? The suffering, you know, from the injustice, from the war, you know? 
So how, how did you start working with Epidemic Sound? Why did you choose them instead of, you know, more traditional routes, if you will? I actually get uh, in contact with uh, Epidemic Sound through a producer. Yeah? Uh, which, yeah, I work with in this project now. I'm not sure if I had any specific thing, you know, because uh, I was starting my musical project and trying to find, like, uh, a suitable, you know, platform for me here. And uh, I was playing live a lot. And I started recording my first debut album, Diversity, which was released uh, last year mm -hmm. in September 2021. And uh, I had no plans for what's next, you know. Uh, and when we started talking, me and the producer, uh, he, after, yeah, of course, I had a meeting with Epidemic Sound and, and uh, he suggested the collaboration. And um, I think it sounded good, like everything was like in a professional level, you know. And uh, I was happy trying it. Awesome. Trying the project. And it's the first uh, collaboration between me and, and yeah. Epidemic Sound. Yeah. I write in many different languages, you know. And the project I did for Epidemic Sound, it was like, I think, five different languages. Five languages? Five you speak languages. five languages? Oh, a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, I'm but, like, I speak three languages. I'm a boss, you know. <laughs> you mad? <laughs> I, I, I managed to to have a little bit more than that. All right, right. But uh, I chose like five different languages, and in order for the collaboration to be successful, from my side, I needed to translate all the text, all right. uh, you know, the lyrics, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, epidemic sound, so uh -huh. that they understand. And they know exactly what these songs are about. All right. What the message is about, you know. Mm instrument what instrument would you be and why I think I would be a guitar it has to do with like um, this long relation I had with the guitar yeah. like building my own first guitar when I was 13 years old cool you built yeah. your own guitar I built it yeah I built wow, it myself you're a most talented man my friend yeah I, I was forced to do it you know because yeah. there was no way to get any guitar you know so all right so you just won the Swedish Grammys Award. You're a successful artist. What's next, my friend? Except me, you know, trying to slay you in this <laughs> game. <laughs> except, except winning over you. <laughs> Is that the next thing? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I guess, like, more uh, production, you know. Yeah. I'm going to focus on uh, more music videos. Mm -hmm. And also, if I can pay uh, the visit to uh, Sudan as well and take musicians with, with me, right. exactly, because I've never uh, done that since I moved to Sweden. So if the situation became a little bit better mm -hmm. and safe, then I would like to take uh, you know musicians with me and do a tour in, oh, that's uh, cool. in Sudan. Yeah, that's one of the biggest dreams that I would... That's cool. I would, yeah, I would uh, 
like to achieve actually yeah yeah that's a cool dream <laughs> <laughs>